We give glory to God for yet another week in the land of the living, and we want to thank you for always creating the time to listen to the revelation knowledge the Lord makes available through this channel. As you listen to God again through his mouthpiece, Anthony Adifarakin, may you receive light, and may the grace for application and manifestation rest upon you in Jesus' name. Be blessed as you listen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for yet another week in your presence. Thank you for the grace given to us to be among the living till now. Thank you for all you've done for us in time past. Thank you for all the word you have uh, brought our way. Thank you for the revelation you've brought our way. Thank you also for the grace to apply you have always be, uh, made available to us. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. We have come again to learn at your feet. We pray that you give us understanding. Open up our hearts that we may receive from you. Teach us afresh and grant us grace to apply what we'll be learning from you. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. We celebrate your majesty. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. Our friends, I want to welcome you to this uh, week's episode of Glenn Podcast. And uh, the Lord is said to bless us again this week. So the topic we're going to be looking at for this uh, week's episode is divine vacancy. We're going to be considering... Uh, divine vacancy and our text from john chapter 4 verse 21 to 24 from the new king james version nkjv we're looking at john chapter 4 for our text and we're looking at 21 to 24 jesus said to her woman believe me the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain or in jerusalem worship the father verse 22 you worship what you do not know we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the eye is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The Lord bless his words in our heart in Jesus' name. Divine vacancy. I have just taken a text from John chapter 4. Verse 21 to 24 from the New King James Version. Now, the text we just read uh, expresses God the Father's ongoing search for true worshippers. That's actually the essence of um, the text we just read. God the Father is constantly looking for, is constantly searching, is constantly seeking true worshippers. You know, Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth and announced the kind of vacancy that our Father, Heavenly Father constantly once filled. Jesus Christ came from heaven. He knew what was going on in heaven, so he came to the earth. And he told every one of us here, he told everyone on earth, the kind of job vacancy, you know, I call it job, just for you to understand, when you hear vacancy, that's the kind of vacancy that the Heavenly Father, our God the Father, constantly wants filled. He's always looking for true worshippers. That's the role. God is constantly looking for is constantly seeking true worshippers those who will worship him in spirit and in truth god is constantly looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth now god is not looking for occasional worshippers god is not looking for situation dependent worshippers uh god is not looking for seasonal worshippers he's not looking for uh, social media worshippers, you know, cajoled or compared worshippers and the likes. He's not looking for those who will worship him whenever they, it's only when they remember that they worship him. They worship him on Christmas because, hey, everybody's going to church. Those who have never been in church, who have never gone to church in the whole year, they usually come uh, during uh, Christmas and they come during the new year. Those are the two days some people ever go to church. That's the only time they lift up their hands and worship God. That's not what God is looking for. God is not looking for occasional worshippers who just worship him once in a while. That's not what he's looking for. He's not looking for situation-dependent worshippers. Those who worship him whenever the situation is favorable, and they will not worship him when the situation is unfavorable. Not the not the uh, Israelite dimension. Remember in the wilderness when the Jesus, I mean, when the Almighty God delivered uh, the children of Israel from their land of captivity in Egypt. You know they were singing. If you look at Exodus 14, 15, they were singing. They sang a new song. They were very happy. You know, 
they were happy. In fact, they started singing, they started rejoicing from uh, Exodus 12. You read from 12, 13, 14, 15, they were happy. But then, anytime they witnessed probably a little delay, they needed water, there was no water, uh, they were hungry a little bit, they would start complaining. They would not worship anymore. But whenever God delivered them, the rest of the party, oh, the sun, they worship God. Then there's a problem again. Oh, Lord, why have you brought us here to kill us? Then God blesses them again. Oh, Lord, thank you for giving us this. Then there's one delay. Oh, Lord, God, why are you now delaying? That, that's not the kind of worshipers God is looking for. No. Not situation-dependent worshipers. Not those who only worship when they give them a raise at work. They increase their salary, then they begin to worship. No. And maybe there's one thing that happened. There was one bill that they were not expecting and they took some money from their account. They were not expecting. Then they stopped worshipping. Say, God, how will you allow that? No. Not situation-dependent worshippers. Not those who only worship when they find when they found that they are, they, are now, uh, they are now pregnant. They have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Oh, thank God. Now I'm pregnant. They begin to worship. Then after delivering that particular child, probably they're expecting to have another one and uh, no other one is coming. Year one, year two, year three, year four, they keep trying. No child. Say, God, what's going on? Why me? They stop worshipping. That's not the kind of worshippers God is looking for. Situation dependent. So if you are one, that's not, he's not looking for the, such a type. He's not looking for people like you. Sorry to say. He's not looking for seasonal worshippers. He's not looking for social media worshippers. Those who worship God only on their walls. Facebook wall. They post it there. They lift up their hands and put it on their social media uh, page and all the walls and the handles and the rest. But in real life, they are not worshipping. So they create their impression worshippers. They create an impression online that they are worshippers, digital worshippers. Make believe worshippers. They lift up their hands. They post as worshippers online. But in real life, they are not worshippers. Those are not the people God is looking for. It's not looking for cajoled or compelled worshippers. If you don't worship now, somebody will be looking at someone. Let me just worship. No. You don't have to be cajoled, not, not compelled worshippers. And the likes. God is looking for genuine, cheerful, and sincere worshippers who will worship him for who he is and not just for what he does. Those who will sit down like David and meditate on God. Do you know it's possible to meditate on God? Just think about God. This God, how great thou art. David said, what is man? That you are so mindful of him. He, he talked about it. How can you be so, so, uh, how can you be so concerned about man? What is dust? He meditated on God. And, you know, that led into sincere worship. You meditate on God for who he is, for his work in creation, for all his marvelous works. And you worship in truth and in spirit, regardless of what you are feeling. So I ask you, why do you worship God? Or maybe, even then, how do you worship God? Do you even worship God at all? Are you a seasonal worshiper? Are you a situation-dependent worshiper? Are you a transactional worshiper? Lord, I'm worshiping you now. By tomorrow, I expect a call. I need somebody to give me a contract. I'm going to worship you on Monday. By Tuesday, I need a contract. Transactional worshipers. Are you a social media worshiper? Cajoled or compelled? That you have to be forced before you worship? Make believe worshipers? Or are you genuine? Are you sincere in your worship? Ask yourself, you know yourself. Do you worship God in spirit and in truth? And you need to understand this. Those who worship God in spirit and in truth, they cannot keep His abiding presence away from their lives. They can't. Even if you want God to not come to your life, it's too late. Once you're a worshiper, He will come there. You know why? Psalm 22 verse 3. Psalm 22 verse 3 says, That's where He lives. That's where that's the way he lives. You can't chase God away from his accommodation. God lives. He dwells. He resides. He abides in the praises of his people. You want God to relocate to your life and stay there permanently? Be a worshiper in spirit and in truth because the Bible said that is the kind of worshiper. Those are the kind the Lord God Almighty is looking for. And the good news is the vacancy is still being filled. The position is still open. Uh, the advert is still on. God is still searching. God is still looking for worshippers. There's still divine vacancy. God is still searching, still looking for worshippers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. The question is, will you become one today? Will you become a genuine worshipper today? Think about that. Think about that. Make a decision. Think about that. Uh, but if you are there, you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ because you can't even worship God if you're a sinner. It's wrong. 
it's an abomination thing. You even hear what he's saying. You need to be saved for you to be able to qualify. That's one of the requirements of filling up this vacancy. You want to be a worshiper? You have to be born again. You have to be saved so that you can apply and become a worshiper. So you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of your salvation. Please forgive all my sins. Save my soul and make me yours forever. I surrender my life to you today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this word. We appreciate your other name. Thank you for the understanding. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, myself and my listeners, we are telling you this moment that we are interested in this position. We want to become genuine worshippers, sincere worshippers. We want to worship in spirit and in truth. Please, Lord, engage us in the name of Jesus. Come and dwell in our praises. In the mighty name of Jesus, forgive us for being transactional and seasonal worshippers. Beginning from now, we will worship in spirit and the truth, help our resolve. In the name of Jesus. And for your children who have decided to surrender their life to Jesus, accept them in the beloved. Write their names in the book of life and also be, make them genuine worshippers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. We give thanks to God for the revelation of His Word. If you said that prayer of salvation, congratulations. Your sins are now forgiven and your new life has begun. Please locate a Bible-believing church near you and start fellowshipping with other believers there. Or if you need help in learning how to live this new life in Christ Jesus, kindly send us a message through our website, www.glome.org, and we will respond accordingly. We will meet again next week for another episode if the Lord has not returned. Until then, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you.